Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so in this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, how the recommendation evaluation is biased if the implicit feedback is missing, not at random. And uh, so this is a joint work with my wonderful colleagues, uh, Ying, Yuan, Chen Yang, and Serge, as well as my advisor, Deb Bastian at Cornell Tech. Uh, does it work? Cool. So as you all know, uh, offline evaluation is a common practice for re recommendation research and practical use. So the basic idea here is that we want to measure the reward of different recommendation algorithms using the user item interaction history that, that was collected from an online production platform. Um, and compared to A-B testing, there are many advantages of this approach. For example, offline ev evaluation is very cost effective and efficient, and in, it enables us to iterate our algorithm design much faster and it prevents us from deploying some very bad algorithm in production. However, there's a very critical limitation of offline uh, evaluation. That is the user interaction data that we collected is not IID sampled, and usually they are missing not at random. And what this entails is that the evaluation for these kind of recommendations algorithms uh, can be biased. So actually, before I talk about the bias of offline evaluation, I, I want to just give a quick overview of how such evaluation works. So I will explain the evaluations through this user item matrix. I hope a lot of you here are familiar with. So in this matrix, rows represent users and columns represent items. And in the production, we observe some user item interactions. And the dot here means that the user I interacted with item J. And then for all these user item interactions, we randomly split them into, into a training set and a testing set. And for the evaluation, we first train and validate a recommendation model on the training set, and then report average performance over the holdout user item interaction pairs. And we call this approach average over all. So this approach has been applied widely to evaluate both rating-based recommendation systems and implicit feedback-based recommendation systems. So here, the implicit feedback is broadly defined here. Um, basically, it's the positive-only signals, such as uh, clicks, upvotes, or view, or listen. Um, so previous work has shown that this kind of average overall approach is biased for uh, evaluating the rating-based recommendation systems because ratings are missing not at random. However, when it comes to the implicit feedback, previous work actually assumes that uh, this approach is unbiased because implicit feedback is missing uniformly at random. And in fact, if you look at the recommendation literature, many of the papers actually take this for granted uh, when evaluating recommendation algorithms. So in this work, we actually want to argue that implicit feedback is actually not missing not uniform at random. And what this actually entails is that average overall is biased when we use this to evaluate uh, implicit feedback-based recommendation algorithms. And in, in particular, in this work, we investigate the evaluation bias introduced by popularity bias. That is, users are more likely to be exposed to popular items because the item presentations are often ranked by popularity or some kind of recommendation algorithms. So to intuitively understand why this is the case, let's consider this kind of a hypothetical example. And let's say for a user, among all items, the number of items, the number of long tail items liked by this user is 10 times as many as those liked, uh, liked popular items. And however, because of the popularity bias, our, our observation may show that uh, the opposite. Basically, uh, the number of uh, liked popular items is 10 times as many as liked uh, long tail items. And now let's consider two recommendation algorithms. Algorithm one works only for popular items and doesn't work for long tail items at all. And algorithm two is a little bit worse than algorithm one in terms of their performance for popular items, but it works equally well for the long tail items. So under such a scenario, any sensible evaluation, sorry, there's an animation. So any sensible evaluation should pick favor algorithm two than algorithm one. Um, however, if, if we look at average overall, it actually favored algorithm one because our observation basically is hugely biased. So ideally, an unbiased evaluation of uh, implicit feedback recommendation system should work as following. 
So given the item rankings predicted by an algorithm, denoted as z hat here, the reward function will first calculate the reward for each user item pair, where the item is from the, uh, those liked by the user from the entire item set, denoted as SU here. And then the C, function C here, can be any scoring function that you like, AUC, recall, or discriminative like uh, DCG, basically. And then after we calculate the reward for the user item pair, we then calculate the average reward for each user. And finally, the reward for a recommendation algorithm um, is basically an average across all users. However, in reality, this set SU is, un is unobservable because there are so many items that users didn't have a chance to be exposed to. So what average overall did is that it basically used the sort of the observed set of items that liked by user um, SU star to substitute the SU. And fundamentally, we show that, that, that the expectation value of this average overall evaluator is not equal to uh, the true recommendation performance. And here, we basically model the observation of each positive user item pair using a Bernoulli distribution with the probability PU of uh, being observed. And to address this bias, uh, we leverage the inverse propensity scoring technique from causal inference and counterfactual reasoning. Um, uh, so basically to derive this IPS uh, unbiased evaluator. And the basic idea is to divide the score or the reward for user item pair with the propensity or probability that it's being observed. And also replace the SU star with the unbiased SU. So in the paper, we proved that the expectation value of this uh, IPS evaluator is actually equals to the true uh, recommendation performance. However, as you can see in this slide, the set SU is still un unobservable. Therefore, we uh, further leverage this technique called self-normalized inverse propensity scoring technique uh, and use the sum of the inverse propensity to substitute the set of the SU. So according to the original paper that, uh, published, uh, that proposed these results, um, this kind of approach can significantly, significantly reduce the variance of the estimator. And at the same time, this is a consistent and the, this, this evaluator is consistent and it, it converges to the true expectation value when n is large. So then the question is how do we estimate the propensity scores? Um, so here the main factor that we want to uh, incorporate when estimating propensity score is popularity bias. And to make this estimation feasible, we make several assumptions user independence assumption, two steps assumption, and assumption that user preference is not affected by item presentation. I'm not going to go through the details of these assumptions. Um, so basically in the paper, we talk about the reasonings behind these assumptions and the scenarios where these kind of uh, um, assumptions can be relaxed. Uh, so please come to our poster or refer to our paper if you are interested in more details. So in addition to these assumptions, we also use uh, sort of a power law distribution that is commonly used to uh, customize, uh, characterize the um, popularity bias to actually model the probability that items are presented to the users. So the NI star here is basically the observed item popularity. And finally, we showed that the propensity a score can be basically estimated by the observed item popularity with a hyperparameter gamma at the exponent. And this hyperparameter can be estimated from a known online content serving policy or um, uh, by some intuitions um, and heuristics. So we conduct several experiments in the paper. So in one of, ex of our experiments, we compare uh, the outputs of the different evaluation approaches to the true recommendation performance. And we actually find that the SNPs uh, evaluator produces significantly lower mean absolute error compared to the average overall. So in other words, um, although this approach is quite simple, uh, it actually significantly reduced the evaluation bias of the naive average overall kind of approach. And another way of thinking about this kind of results is that we actually show that the accuracy of, recommendation, uh, of recommending popular items is a significant overestimation of true recommendation performance. So of course, in this presentation, I leave out many, many different details. Uh, so come to our posters or refer to our papers if you are interested. Um, and yeah, so our work is the early step in this direction, and there are many future work that I don't have time to talk about. 
Um, so with this, one last thing, we conduct all these experiments using OpenRec, so uh, you can go to the OpenRec website to reproduce all, all of our results, and I'm happy to take any question now. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. So, uh, questions? Uh, shall I go? Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, hi, Munyal Alman, Spotify. Th thank you for this. I I'm going to ask you a difficult question. I think this is brilliant. What is, you have data from Oath, I used to be there and so on. Um, how can you show how important it is so what is the actual impact? Because this is much more at the accuracy level and those, those kind of things. Uh -huh. How, how the getting this right, and I think it's, it's, it should be done, but how does it impact the actual online things? I don't know whether you had access to other data to show that. Uh, so I think, so thank you for your question. This is a very good question. So uh, the way that I would like to think about is like, because if you look at our evaluation, like the objective, we are actually uh, evaluating users' preference ac across the all items in, the, in this system. So I would think of some kind of a long-term kind of satisfaction of the user. So it's not like you deploy a A-B testing and then you can directly see the difference. But if we can sort of optimize recommendation system over the entire item set, then I, I, it's, I guess that that is some relevant to kind of a user's long-term satisfaction. And has there been some work to actually look at this and try to quantify it, from uh, a, even if it's just from a theoretical perspective? Uh, on top of my head, I don't, I don't know any work that, that that's basically connect the, this kind of offline approach to the online approach. So yeah, this is a very interesting future direction, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So I have one question. Uh, in a recent talk, by, by someone from, from industry, uh, I, I asked if they were actually using this uh, inverse propensity scores in order to, to implement their recommenders. And he thought that computational complexity was an important issue. So you mentioned uh, how you were estimating the propensity scores, uh -huh. but did you study also computational complexity, if how, how much time uh, it would take to to make the recommendations to implement train in order to use these methods? Um, so in, from the computation, uh, actually I'm not sure like what, what, what part of computation are we talking about. So I think the part that calculating the propensity is very cheap in terms of like getting the propensity score for every item. And basically like after we get those uh, propensity scores, it's a weighted average uh, compared to like the traditional or classical average overall. So I don't think this will introduce like extra huge computational costs. But I guess like in the online setting, if you do like contextual bandits, which is like completely different from a different problem mm -hmm. setting of this like offline batch kind of evaluation, then that, that might be an issue there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you. And